So this, I want to go back to what you said about, you know, carrying the uh, emotional labor, the invisible labor being something that in addition to internalized capitalism or through it, uh, women in leadership experience. And I'd love for you to just say more about that, um, what it is. And I, I ask this because I think women know that it's happening. Oh, yeah. I think it's hard for women to name it and then do something about it. So yeah. what what would you have to say about that? Yeah, so when we're when we're talking about the cognitive and emotional labor of a household, I like to uh, talk to women, men. I mean, it's we can't do it without the men. We can't have these conversations just for among sure. ourselves. Um, yeah, for sure. But it's it's its own uh, essentially organization, right? That you're mm -hmm. running your own company that you're you're running um, with a partner, with a family. You have stakeholders and constituents in the home. And so when we think about the cognitive labor of running a household organization, we're talking about things like uh, who pays the bills. Who is the one scheduling mm -hmm. the play dates? Who's buying the gifts for the birthdays, for the holidays? Who's doing the decorating? Who's in charge of the social calendar? Who's making the choices about where dinner is coming from? Or are we cooking it? And if we're cooking it, what are we making? And what are the needs of the folks in the house or the guests coming over? Um, and more often than not, these thoughts and cognitions fall on the woman. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, I'm not saying all women, all men, but research shows more often than not, this is what's happening. Uh, um, there's an organization called fairplay.org brilliant. Um, and they, they help couples and partners navigate all of the things that actually happen in the household. So that's, that's on the cognitive side of things, which is a huge load to carry because you're no longer just when you're a leader, you're not just responsible for yourself. It's you're responsible for the people in your charge, right? And the people in your, your care, your team, it's the same way at home. Um, most of the time, women never just get to think about and prioritize themselves because there are too many, again, if we're talking business language, too many stakeholders in the household mm -hmm. for them to be able to do that. On the emotional side of things, First, we have the uh, the the stress, the frustration, moving through the day in this maddening way of I have all of this extra cognitive labor, and now I feel resentful mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. So carrying that, mm -hmm. um, there's also the emotional labor of who is, you know, who is the one caring for the aging parents and taking on the emotions of what it means to transition from the child to the caregiver of, of a parent. And we are ill-equipped in the United States to do this mm. Um, mm. On, a, on a physical level for caring for them and where they live, but ill-equipped emotionally to handle that transition as well. And that can be for your parents. It could be for your partner's parents. Um, then it's what's going on with the kids at school and all of those elements around, are they being treated well? Are they being treated fairly? Are they happy? Are they, um, are they suffering? What, what is happening with the child? Um, we have our, our fur babies, but all of the emotion that comes along with the thoughts, right? So like we've talked about before, everything for us as humans is a feeling first, a thought second, and a behavior third. Yeah. Any cognition that you're having, any behavior that a woman undertakes is a feeling first. Um, and chances are you're not getting the opportunity to connect with and reflect on those feelings because of the unpaid uh, domestic labor, the unpaid cognitive labor, um, and you're running your own business or team or company and there's only 24 hours in a day and fairplay.org suggests women get less than 30 minutes a day to just focus on themselves. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so it's, it's, it's hard out there. 
yeah. to be a woman right now. Um, yeah. I, I, I have this experience and I'm sure listeners are too. I'm like, so you, when you speak, I'm like, I'm like the student. I really am everything. <laughs> you just have such a gift for bringing in resources and statistics that I think, um, really drive this home. I want to go back to, uh, this idea that there's, um, many tasks that are invisible mm -hmm. that become visible through this fair play method. I'm not sure if there are other methods, but I'm most familiar with fair play. Yeah. I'm actually doing it in my own home, uh, with Arnie. Yay. Uh, and I will say, I just got back from a stepmom's retreat in Utah and, um, a lot of the issues that the other women were bringing up, I was like, fair play, fair yeah. play, <laughs> fair play. So Eve Rodsky shout out, uh, hope to meet you someday. You're doing great work. And so is your team. How does it change Katie? If you are kid free, mm. if you are single, right? Cause part of what we know, um, people are having less children <laughs> and choosing that. Um, and then also, you know, this, this dynamic of another thing, fun fact I learned at my retreat, the word stepmom comes from like the 14th century. Really? Yeah. And it was because another woman stepped into the family after the wife had died. But here's the thing. I'm divorced. You're getting divorced. Divorce. We don't talk about divorce in the 14th century. <laughs> So it creates this new dynamic, right? Of, you know, uh, being single, being single, maybe while you're a CEO. Mm -hmm. um, so what do you make of how it changes, if at all, this experience of emotional and, um, you know, internalized capitalism, emotional labor, what changes? It's, so I have a lot of clients that are in this boat, right? Me and too, me too. Right. The research is showing, and I'm about to be back in that boat. Welcome. <laughs> this divorce is finalized. Welcome. Um, yes. Yes. Um, you know, a lot of, a lot of my women identified clients are, are in this boat and what I'm experiencing from them is just sheer overwhelm of <sighs> my gosh. Um, how do I go be a pastry chef for 12 hours. Um, in not just a pastry chef, the, the head pastry chef in my kitchen for 12 hours. Um, people are calling off sick. The holidays are coming up. I have a toilet that is overflowing a dog that needs walking. I walked my dog and now it got a piece of glass in its foot. When am I going to take it to the vet? I take yeah. it to the vet. I get a flat tire. Like I don't have the bandwidth or the capacity for this. And mm -hmm. I'm like, it's not that you don't, it's there's only 24 hours in a day. How do you want to be spending them? Because you're right, you can't do it all. And maybe it means having to take a step back and rest as hard as you play. And so in those moments, the conversation becomes, how are we getting you time off from work? Mm -hmm. um, because I think one of the things that happens again, and, and this is not women specific, it's it's the human condition and, and living in a capitalist society. Um, we are humans that happen to do work. We are not workers that happen to be human. And so uh, for this particular client, if you want to have a successful season in your kitchen at the busiest time of your year, my gosh, you can't be going into that running on empty and feeling mm -hmm. like your home is not taken care of for when you come back to rest and you can't because there are too many other things to do. Um, and we were able to coach her through to the point where she was able to take 10 days away after mm -hmm. her last team member took their last vacation day she put in to be out for the next 10 days and explained it in a very clear way. I can't be the best that you need me to be unless I'm restored and energized for the upcoming season. This is why mm -hmm. I need the time. Um, and soon employers aren't going to be able to say no to any 
paid time off request starting in 2024, mm-hmm. uh, which I love. It's paid time off as a benefit and your employer cannot Amen. tell you how you're going to use that benefit. And so for everybody listening, at least in the state of Illinois, starting in 2024, you put in for paid time off. You don't have to give a reason why you're taking that time. Mm. Mm. I love that. Snaps for that. 